So perhaps we should race to see who can defeat Sin first, no? Oh, very well then. I accept your challenge. Isaru! Yuna, I beg your leave. Good luck to both of us. Yes. Oh, well there you go. Another summoner who isn't Donna and actually seems kind of nice. So yeah, Saru, he, his entire inspiration for becoming a summoner was um, Yuna's father. And they're going to race to see who can beat Sin. So uh, it's really easy to miss dialogue here. You might just want to run straight up into the Cloister of Trials, go do your thing. But do have a quick look around. You'll find uh, Parse down here, this little kid. Oh, it's so pretty. These characters all really come into their element in the sequel, by the way. This guy here. Oh, it's so pretty. This kid, okay, is basically responsible for you getting access to the most hardcore, difficult, like, dungeon lore-wise as well. Like, the end, end, end game crazy stuff that the sequel offers. Like, which is way more intense than anything Final Fantasy X offers at all. Like, the most true, difficult, challenging Final Fantasy content that little kid, like, ends up getting you into. But, uh, we'll deal with that in many months. So here, let's open this chest. Well, not many months. I don't know how long it'll take to, for us to get there. So there's an ether. You can go into the, uh, the side chambers here. Incorrectly called them the anti-chambers in a previous episode. These are just the nuns' chambers. So here, more people running in circles, see? This guy says, oh my, we're out of funeral shrouds. Wow, there's a dead dude over here as well. Rest in peace. Rip in pe- <laughs> Okay, there's a chest back here as well with a remedy in it. This uh, guy says, the captain saved my life and got hurt. I'm so worthless. I said to you guys like many episodes ago, oh, the dialogue in this game is so poignant, guys. This is amazing, man. The captain saved my life and got hurt. I'm so worthless. Like, if that's not a brilliant, you know, example uh, of, like, survivor guilt and what would really go through someone's head, I don't know what is. Really think about it. I mean, this person is going to feel like crap. What if you were that person just saving you, your worthless ass, and now you don't know what to do with yourself? I can seriously see and get into the head of this character. Not even that many words, right? But it really resonates. It's crazy. So here's another body on this bed we can't really interact with. This nun here. Who's playing with a kid, I guess. Yevon's blessing has saved many crusaders from sin's onslaught. Yes, they have disobeyed the teachings, but we cannot turn our backs on them. True. And a kid. Busy, busy. Busy, busy. Okay, sure. And there's some little squatter monkeys in here. And finally, a guy breathing heavily. My chocobo. Oh, chocobo. I think that line maybe could have been a bit better. It would have been better if it was like, uh, my, and then just the name of the chocobo, and we just infer that it was a chocobo rather than anything else. So here's a Braska statue, lots of little monkeys. It's really weird, this area, that it's so somber and sad, right? And then you've got all these happy little monkeys dancing everywhere. I don't know. I think that's really deliberate about this temple, too. They're just running around like this. Uh, so another chest over in this chamber. Now, I believe we've got everything. Mega Phoenix. That's really nice. Uh, we're all out of healing potions. Even so, more wounded men are being brought here. Did I ever show you guys a Mega Phoenix? I think that's the first one we've ever had, right? And I think it's quite fitting that in this time of Yevon people, like mass healing and reviving people, we get one of the best healing weapon items in the game. But Mega Phoenix, uh, it's a Phoenix down for the entire party, just as a Mega Potion is a High Potion for the entire party. Really strong and great when you can customize gear too. There's this person over here. This is the Temple of Yevon Jose. It is famous for its association with Lord Meehen, the founder of the Cru Crusaders. Had he witnessed this dreadful sight? Oh, I could just imagine his grief. Yeah, the destruction of his organization. So remember, the Meehan High Road, it's like one long-ass road, right? And we're sort of, we're well into the continent now, and this is still the road that he marched, I guess. Captain, please, wake up. I don't think you can have much luck there, my friend. You are the best, Captain. <laughs> we'll never forget you. Hmm, okay. So there we go, uh, we spoke to Parse, Maroda and Isaru have left the temple, so I don't believe there's any dialogue for us, unless they're standing by the door. Yeah, they are, see, it's easy, easily now missed. Now we go to Kilika. From there we take the ferry, perhaps as far as Besaid. Weird perspective there, like, the way that we're set up on our pilgrimage? 
is very linear, right? It's, oh, we start in the very south, we get in the very north. We're just going on a nice, long, happy route. But, you know, they, they, they thread dialogue through the game, this bit included, that suggests many other pilgrimages. So the, the summoners take totally different routes, right? And Aeons gaining strength as you acquire new ones. It's not necessarily that the Aeon from this temple is always better than the Aeon from Besaid. It's just totally dependent on the summoner and their training. So, you know, it's really interesting. Another one was Auron back at Luca where he says, where are we headed? You know, it's not clear cut. And many of these lines or these words that you see on this map, I like to think are references to other temples, other towns that you never see in the game, but um, are there in the lore. So uh, that was Isaru and Moreda. Our itinerary just keeps slipping. We should be climbing the slopes of Mount Gagazet by now. Wow. Climbing the slopes of Mount Gagazet, by the way, that's right at the end of the pilgrimage. I keep telling them, the more time we waste, the farther we'll fall behind the other summoners. I hear Operation Meehan did not go well. We summoners must do our part before another fool plan wastes more lives. Mm-hmm, I can see that, the motivation. We summoners must do... The motivation to, uh, stop people from killing themselves in this way. Hey, you. Me? You are Yuna's guardian, no? Moroda's heard a curious rumor. I thought you should know. I heard it from those crusaders. Seems that summoners have been going out on pilgrimage and just disappearing. It could just be the fiends got them, but not so many so quickly. Sorry I don't know more, but watch your back. Ain't much future for a guardian without a summoner, eh? What? What? What y'all talking about? We're talking about doing your job as a guardian. Hey, I'm doing good. Right, big brother? Please be careful. Will do. I get the feeling, obviously, that kid... Passe! Oh, what? We're leaving! Be right there! See ya! Is only with them because he's family and, you know, they can't leave the kid on his own rather than actually being a good guardian. Uh, but yeah, let's move on up. I was in the middle of something before he started talking to me, but whatever. But... Uh, the Cloister of Trials lies within. Are you prepared? This is the first Cloister of Trials where we go in and it's not a mistake and it's not an accident. Let's do it. Uh, I talked to you guys a little while back on Besaid when we were running around with Wacker behind us that the game weans you into certain things. All right, Guardians, at attention. We are ready. All right, let's do it. And so this is a great example of that. This is where it stopped weaning you in, right? So think about the Cloister of Trials. The first Cloister of Trial, the story sets up the excuse for you to be running around as Tidus on your own, right? Because everyone else is already inside, you ran ahead of Wacker. When you get to Kilika, again, it sets up the excuse for you to be running around there inside by doing that kind of stupid thing with Donna throwing you in. But now that you've got to Jose, now that you're far enough in the game, it just lets you go in on your own, you know? We don't see our whole party here. It's not me, us organizing the entire team like, uh, like that old game Summoner for the PS2. It's just, you know, us running around on our, on our own and we represent the entire party as we always have so yeah all right we remove this jose sphere there uh, but yeah oh no i think i was saying i just wonder if summoners go in waves and i guess again the idea that loads of summoners are going missing that sets up the idea that they go in waves too so uh earlier in the episode I, i'll just spit this out very quickly right that i think is really good about the way that this game tells its story uh, like narratively, structurally, it's very cut and dry. You guys might have started to notice it a little bit here, right? Basically, we have an overarching story about being on a pilgrimage, getting from point A to point B. And that sets, you know, the overall narrative. They set up a bunch of mysteries and surreal weird stuff early on in the game too with the Xanakin stuff. We, uh, we as viewers, as consumers are all very keen to get answers to, right? But then what they do that I think is really fantastic is as we are on this long overarching goal going from A to B, they set up all these like mini arcs, these mini stories, right? So we start with some stuff. Let's say it'll start to Besaid, right? The first mini arc, really, there's a lot of stuff going on, obviously, and it all overlaps. But the first one is really, you know, the idea of the Blitzball tournament. And as the Blitzball tournament ends, 
we move into, you know, a bit of an arc to do with the Crusaders and Operation Meehen. And you'll notice how the game layers these things together. While these, while we were doing stuff in uh, with the Blitzball tournament, we'd already been hearing about the Crusaders stuff, right? A little bit earlier on. And so, again, here now that arc is pretty much over, right? We're still in the ends of it. We're in the throngs of that arc. We're, you know, dealing with these people who have all died and stuff. But as that story winds down, it's winding us into another new story. And that's this weird story, as it would seem, about um, uh, summoners going missing. So it's really cool. I love it. It sets up all these little things. And I'm not going to bring attention to it anymore. But uh, it's great. And the game keeps doing it uh, as you go through. All these little goals and things, these like distractions, if you will, they all help to, you know, it makes going from A to B, this monumental task, not feel like some long grind that loses your attention very quickly. Anyway, so what are we doing here? Uh, you may notice I've been wandering around, not entirely sure of that fact myself. Uh, basically, the goal here is underneath my feet, we've got a symbol. Okay, this is the symbol of Yevon. And the uh, goal is to light up the entire thing. So if we come back down to this door we were at earlier, and those two spheres got consumed, if we actually place a sphere in one of these recesses, and I'm purely doing this for demonstration, you'll see it lights up that area. So we've got to get the entire thing lit up. But right now we don't really have enough spheres. We need to light up the bottom left, the bottom right, the one in the middle which is already lit up. And then at the top there's an eye. We need to not only light up the eye but also the dot in the middle of the eye too. There's also an area over here with a pillar that we can reset. So what the hell is going on? Well, um, as it's been a while since I've done these, I know the general concept. But we may have a little bit of uh, blind-ish action going on here. So basically we've got two things here. Um, and these look kind of curious, which I put two Jose spheres in. Let's drop a Jose sphere into this sphere-shaped recess here, shall we? And that didn't do anything. That's weird. See, I know what we're trying to do is supercharge a Jose sphere at the moment. But I'm not sure how exactly one would accomplish that. Let's, uh... Oh, I know what we got to do. Okay, so let's put a Jose sphere in here. That should make a glyph appear on the door. Yeah, there you go. So now we'll touch the glyph. Oh no, we can't touch the glyph. Why can't we touch the glyph? Ah! Okay, what about this sphere here? This is a Jose sphere. Now we've turned that off. But that shouldn't make much difference. Where's this one from here getting powered from? Is there a glyph sphere somewhere still around? No, there's not. I'm pretty sure what we need to do is put a glyph sphere in the pedestal while two Jose spheres are on the wall. Which will um, charge the glyph sphere up. So this is Jose, this is Jose. Let's just try touching this, shall we, and see if anything happens. No, it just puts it in the middle again. Alright, um... Man, I was positive this would work. Let's just try putting it in here and then pushing it in all at once. Maybe I hadn't pushed it fully into position. Maybe this was the problem we had. Yeah, there we go. I, I just didn't push it close enough. Man, that's annoying. I was really second guessing myself then. Okay, cool. So now we've got a really powerful Jose sphere. Uh, and if we put this back in over here... It's miraculously strong enough to open the door now. This is why it's kind of weird, you know, is this really a puzzle or just trial and error? But now that the door's open, what might we like to do? Well, we're going to take both of these spheres out of this door. We don't need them anymore because we, ca we can't really supercharge anything else. So we're going to just drop both spheres because this pillar actually has a sphere recess on both sides. I think this is the first of these that we found in a Cloister of Trials. So we'll grab this one just here like so. Do you know what? I've got to be honest, guys. I feel like I'm forgetting something really cool that I was going to talk to you about in here that my notepad would have originally told me about. And I don't know what it is anymore. I hope it was just the Alexander thing, but I feel like there's something else. Something about the Cloister of Trials. Something about an experience I had when I was doing it on my test file. Oh, well. So we're going to throw the pedestal in there with both spheres on it. Now, if we only had one sphere on it, or none at all, the pedestal would have just fallen to its doom, and we would have had to have uh, 
gone to reset over on the, uh, the panel. But now that it's there, we can actually hop across the room and push this in in the back. Now, you'll notice the sphere on that pedestal in the far side of that room was actually a different color. That was, I believe, the like only glyph sphere of this entire place. So we'll jump back now. Something I do know I struggled with on my test file here was... Um, when you walk up to this thing, sometimes it bugs out and you and Titus like refuses to make the jump. Now, he's doing it just fine here, but I do certainly remember on my test file, I spent ages I was like, wow, you could easily miss that you can jump on that just because it's so clunky. Anyway, so now that we've done that, we can actually get the, pe the uh, pedestal back and it's fine because we pushed it in already, right? So we've lit up the iris. Awesome. So now what do we want to do? Well, we may as well just take these out and uh, use them wherever we can to light everything else up. So let's drop this one here, where it originally was, if you remember, to light up this circular region of the eye. We'll grab this one and put it back in the main corridor on the left, as we had before. I quite like this, like, di duality to these spheres here. You know, the fact that originally this sphere was in, holding the door shut, but also beyond the door, doing something extra. That, that's kind of cool. That you wouldn't know until later on you went in the room and could assess. And then this supercharged one, well, we don't need it there in the door, do we? So let's grab it. I think the only thing that could have made this a little bit more interesting or complicated is this supercharged sphere. Let's say now there's another complication that because this is supercharged, it can't go in this slot or something. Or you need the supercharged one to be in like a specific area. That'd be kind of interesting. But there you go. So now that we've lit it up, it actually turns it into some kind of uh, creepy looking platform here. Uh, that's going to take us into the next area and destroys the pedestal. However, eagle eyed viewers may have noticed over here. Just because we finished a lot of stuff for no other reason. Whatever. There's a glyph on the wall. And what do you know? That glyph is showing us a destruction sphere. Very cool. So the destruction sphere, uh, we could do multiple things with. I th no, okay, never mind. Let's just go upstairs with it. I think we just need it up here. So let's head on up. So now that we've got it on our hands, we're now on the second floor. Uh, cool little area, I guess. But uh, basically, we're just going to come through here and we're going to start pushing these in. This bit isn't really even much of a puzzle. I wonder again, what is this? Uh, some unused mechanic, some extra thing they were thinking about at some point. Because now, what is it? It's just like a time sink. Okay, we've got to go around the room pushing all the little things in. Maybe it's one of those like arbitrary things people put in there to slow the pace down. So that you get more pumped. You're like, oh, I'm about to get a new A on. This is sweet. I don't know. So anyway, you push all of these in. Uh, sorry, there's one more. My, my mistake. There's some cool stuff that happens here in the sequel to you, by the way. I need to stop talking about the sequel, please. And there you go, the door is open. That actually means that it's the end. However, you'll notice there's a pedestal here. And uh, I guess it's been teleported up or whatever. But there's a sphere-shaped recess on it. Really easy to miss. What happens if we put the distraction sphere that was also really easy to miss downstairs in it? Aha, chest. Now, if you're playing along and you didn't get that glyph downstairs, you just came upstairs instantly, you can always go back down the lift, so don't worry. Anyway, that's a magic sphere that boosts the magic power of our certain players. I may give that to Lulu, or I might just give it to Kamari. I don't know just yet. But anyway, there you go. That is that treasure. And as I've mentioned before, if you want something really cool at the end of the game, make sure you get every single one before moving on. So let's go into the antechamber and we'll hear the song of the faith, the hymn of the faith sung by the faith here. Stop pacing around, be calm and wait. I like this. He's the old guy telling us, the young stupid kid, to stop, you know, moving a lot. <laughs> All right. Hey, Lulu. You should try to settle down. Yuna will be blamed if anything happens. Well, well, you again. Oh. Still traveling with quite the crowd, I see. What is it, Bartello? You know this riffraff? You are. Are it, no? What of it? Can I shake your hand? Arin. No, Sir Arin. You're the reason I became a guardian. Ha ha ha. 
<laughs> Thank you, sir. This means so much to me. Calling the personal guardian the Lord Braska Riffraff? And you call yourself a summoner? Yeesh. Bartello enough. Get back here. Hang in there, buddy. Eh? <laughs> Oh my god. I love it. Like, wow, so Donna got that wrong. Yeah, I mean, jeez. Doesn't everyone know who Braska is and Auron? Jeez, Donna. I swear, I'll never wash this hand again. Please, touch me with that hand and I'll remove it. Wow. It reminds me of some cartoon I once watched where they legitimately didn't wash their hands. How much longer? She sure is taking her sweet time. I wonder how Yuna does compare to everyone else. We've got places to go. We can't be kept waiting like this. Okay, sure. I also like Bartello there. I met Sir Arryn. The Sir Arryn. A simple man, but, uh, you know, a, a nice guy, right? I met... And he repeats. Stop pacing. Oren doesn't say anything. Oh, what a famous guy. He's so cool. He shakes it off so easily as well. Uh, Lulu again. You should try to settle down. No, she says the same thing. Wacker. Quite the show, yeah? Not so good on the heart, though. Not all summoners are like you, I guess. Mm-hmm. Not all summoners are. And Kimari? Question mark? Pick spot. Shut up. Wait. Ah, dude, I thought we were bros now. What is this? You grow stronger, but are still a pup. Okay. All right. You grow stronger. Well, uh, I'll listen to you then. Or we can just try and leave as we did before. <laughs> I think it seems like that they should just let you press square to wait or something. Like back at the start where we could press square to surface with Riki. You owe much to your father. All these guardians. And Sir Oren too. And I hear Maester Seymour is quite taken with you. The world must look different when you're the daughter of Lord Braska. This has nothing to do with my father. I am traveling on my own, as a full-fledged summoner. Oh, is that so? Then try standing on your own two legs for once. Um, and yeah, you can rewind it if you want. Titus is back there in the bottom right-hand corner being a prat. Your guardians won't be able to protect you when the time comes. So, um, now we get a new summon. Ixion, there you go. And I've got to say, Donna kind of has a point. Yuna says, this has got nothing to do with my father. Eh, it kind of does, right? Oren's certainly only there because of her father. I don't know about the others so much. Maybe we wouldn't be here if it wasn't because of her father. And namely, her father's influence on our father, as it were. I don't know. And the, and the, the Maester Seymour thing? Yeah, I mean, geez, word seems to have got about that he's smitten with her. And I agree, it does seem like that, right? So anyway, Ixion, Fantastic Aeon, our newest one. As you'd guess from the, the nature of the temple, this is a lightning Aeon. <sighs> <sighs> nice, a nice little nap. Let's uh, let's have a chat with everyone, see what's going on. We're leaving once Yuna gets here. Oh, for once we're not the last one, eh? No matter how dark the night, morning always comes. Mm -hmm. And our journey begins anew. Absolutely. No matter how dark... No music here. The winds of new movement. <laughs> Look at this monkey jumping up at Auron. Jeez. Love it. And he's just ignoring them. It's like they recognize him from 10 years ago. Get ready for the journey ahead. Get ready. Sure, okay. I mean, same old, same old, right? Donna has left. Isaru too. Wow. So, uh, yeah, many, many different summoners. The faces of uh, different people slowly rises. Let's uh, head on inside. This is presumably where Yuna was asleep. Actually, do you know what? I kind of made a mistake there. Let's go back on out. That chest where Luzu's body was in the inn, I believe, is now available to us. So we should quickly grab that while we still can. I also love the positioning of the characters there. Lulu and Waka. What am I doing? Trying to get into the freaking place. Lulu and Waka stood chatting with one another. 
But Kamari and Or Orange has been kind of quiet and standing alone. So there you go. This is a switch hitter. If we hadn't bought the TKO, this would actually be a reasonable weapon for Wacker that you may want to equip. It's 8% more damage. Uh, she says that the inn belongs to Jose Temple. Will you be staying for the night? Uh, you say leave. Oh, I thought she had extra dialogue. That's a bit of a shame. Okay, no worries then. All right, so let's head on in and see where Yuna is at. Uh, do consider a lot of people died last night or, you know, people are wounded still. The Crusaders are still around uh, and she may have been kind of busy. Uh, here's Gata. I'm going back to Besaid. With Luzu gone. Yeah. It'd be hard fighting alone, wouldn't it? Most of the other Crusaders have already left. I'll go soon. Yeah, he sticks about. Uh, I think Tidus lacks empathy a little, or he's not very good consoling people. But how do you console someone in a situation like that, let's be fair? I heard you're leaving too. Good luck. I hope we meet again someday. Oh, he just sounds so dejected. I heard you're leaving too. Okay, so much repeated dialogue around here. Okay, let's uh, head in. And uh, here, this is one of the weird, rare situations. So there's a guy here. He says, Qua! Qua! Actually, well, how am I supposed to read this? What does that mean? When I did this on my test file, I thought I was talking to a monkey. <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? Qua! Is that it? Ah. Qua! Ah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, but here's a Yuna. You can actually see she's laying down there. And we can speak to the, the monk next to her. She was working until dawn. Healing the wounded. Sending the fallen. Okay, I guess I'll just let her sleep for now then. <sighs> ah, morning. What? Morning? Don't worry. But it's morning. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I'll get ready right away. Just a moment. Oh, oh. Don't worry. It's okay. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but it's not okay, is it, really? We're all waiting. <laughs> no, come on. You would totally wait. Who would care, right? Yuna's theme is currently playing in the background. <laughs> Yo, sleepyhead. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Please forgive me. Really, there's no rush. Here. Your hair. <laughs> A summoner with bad hair. What's the world coming to? You could have woken me up. Uh, we called to you. But with all that snoring. Uh, oh. mm. What is it today? Everyone's picking on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too, Sir Oren? Once Lady Yuna fixes her hair, we leave. <laughs> I hadn't really laughed like that in a long time. It was only later that I realized. The only one really laughing then was me. Laughing must have been the only thing keeping them going. It's one of those funny ideas, right? That Yuna's always been just putting on this show. Well, not always, I guess, but whenever they're, you know, it's all cheeky and funny and stuff, but you you either laugh or, you're cr or you cry, I believe, is the way many people would put it. So we can follow them out here. There's actually uh, some people you can talk to here. Don't try, don't worry about trying to chat with those guys. They're on the road too. But uh, you can get a couple of items on your way out. You can't defeat Sin with Machina. The summoners are our only hope. Yevon's teachings are the way. The Crusaders were fools for defying them. Here, take this. I don't need it anymore. You can get Halberd for uh, Kamari here. Let's have a quick look. I'm not sure it'll be more impressive than the Hunter's Spear. Magic plus 20%. It will, actually. Awesome. So, if we're going to make him a mage, we may want to equip him with this. And indeed, also, the Cloister of Trials secret we got was a, uh, a magic sphere that gives him magic plus four. So, that's going to put him well on his way to actually doing some convincing damage once he gets to Lulu's original black magic here. She's obviously far surpassed him and got the next tier up, but he'll catch up in time. 
Uh, he's also got an ability here, Extract Mana. There's plenty of stuff that I can be showing you guys. In fact, he can actually start learning these things here. So, of course, that Halberd would never really be a convincing weapon on any other version of Kamari, where you have him as, like, a physical hitter. But, yeah. So this guy says, The Crusaders deeply regret their actions. I believe it is time to put the past behind us and forgive them. You have and shall forgive those who seek redemption. Should you need a place to recuperate, please return. You're always welcome here. Two high potions. So those are the items you can get. This dude here says the Crusaders have fallen apart, so I'm going to help with guard duty here at the temple for a while. It's the least I can do to repay them for taking us in. It's weird, like, how do... Oran's like, oh, many stories ended here. Like, how do people spread out and what do they do now that their entire organization is over? They're miles away from home, possibly with no family left. Uh, you know, it makes sense. Some people would stay stay behind and uh, help patch things up. Maybe I should quit the Crusaders and become a warrior monk. Uh, also under the control of Wen Keenock, but these people are, you know, strictly Yevonites and they wouldn't be using machina and stuff like that, right? So, uh, yeah. Um, and that's what Oran used to be, too. Let's move on down. That's the same guy. Now, this dude here, uh, first of all, says... I beat myself up all night for taking part in that disastrous operation. Then a monk told me that if I had time for remorse, I should spend it praying. He's right, it's my duty to pray for my departed men. The monk gave me this, but I think you should have it. Oh, ten potions as well, I forgot about that. Okay, I'll pray for all my lost comrades. Uh, this dude, oh come on, if it's not you, who is it? Off so early? Lady Yuna, you must be exhausted after working so hard last night. Will you be okay? Uh, I feel that I have rested enough, but thank you for your kindness. Will you be leaving too? Yes. First we cross the moon flow, and then we head north in search of chocobos to replace those we have lost. Once we find chocobos, our mounted forces will ride again. Huh? Aren't you missing someone? Captain! Wait for me! <laughs> what took you so long? We're leaving. You expect me to keep up with a chocobo? Lady Yuna, I wish you good fortune. Elma, Clasco, let's go. Ma'am. Hey, can I just rest a sec? No complaints. I don't know why, but that wait for me thing is, it sticks out in my mind so much. I really don't know why, but uh, I just remember that line of dialogue. Anyway, so as I was saying, uh, I believe if we return to that bridge, like right now, um, there will be a Blitzball player here that you can recruit. Uh, unfortunately, because I lost my notepad, I can no longer tell you guys actually what Blitzball players are good for. Actually, he's not reappeared. I guess maybe he'll appear later. But uh, there's definitely one on this bridge that you can recruit. Um, so do be aware of that. And uh, yeah, like this is one of the things I originally could have told you guys. Hey, this person's good in this position, this position, this position. But I really can't anymore. Where to next? We cross the Moonflow. Gotcha. Moonflow, baby, here we come. The Moonflow is a really awesome place, by the way. Really awesome. And I've got a lot of cool trivia and stuff that I can talk to you guys about. Especially in reference to where we currently are, which is Jose. However, uh, that said, just before I wrap up the video, one thing I will mention to you guys. For whatever reason, okay, as soon as you finish that specific part of the story there, the world opens up again. Now, we can go all the way along this path here. Uh, we're now in a totally new area. We're on the Moonflow South Bank Road. It's another long road. Uh, plenty of stuff's going to be happening, but what you can do is turn around and walk back, okay? Now, not only can you walk back along the Jose High Road, let's go up the map, I guess this is a nice way to demonstrate it. Not only can you walk back along the Jose High Road, but when you get to that area where we woke up on the beach earlier, pro uh, just before the start of this episode, um, originally that was like blocked off and we could only go forward, but now you'll find some crates are stacked there and you can walk up the crates to get back to the Meehan High Road. And from the Meehan High Road, you can go all the way back to Luca. And previously in Luca, there weren't any boats running anywhere. But now, if you go back to Luca, not only has all the dialogue changed, is everyone going to be talking about how the Crusaders messed up on their mission and stuff, but you can actually get a boat and go back to Kilika. And from Kilika, you can go back to Besaid. 
That's what I'm telling you. Right now, at this point in the story, you could go all the way back to the beginning. So if you are in a situation and someone left me a comment saying, oh, I did this, where maybe you forgot Valifor's overdrive or some other stuff, you can go all the way back. And uh, it's one of those weird things that even the people back in Persaid right now have got messages for us and stuff that we wouldn't see if we wait until the very end of the game. But why would anyone do that? Well, one reason is Blitzball players. There's a Blitzball player in Killika called Tats, who I mentioned before, starts off with a technique called Invisible Shots, and it's a really good idea to grab him up if you can. Or even you can do a lot of exhibition matches against the Killika Beasts and wait for like their lead striker, Velucha, I think it is, is his name. Uh, and you can grab him for your own team, all kinds of stuff like that. Missed items, whatever, you name it. So yeah, it's uh, really weird. It's just uh, a thing that's happened right now. You, the story would never make you think you can go all the way back, but you can. Anyway, guys, uh, I will be ending the video there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, to join me tomorrow for our adventures along the moon flow. Some talk about uh, the continents that Spira makes up. Some other juicy things, cities, towns that are never seen anywhere in game, but are mentioned when you translate stuff uh, that you see on signposts. Anyway, guys. Hope you enjoyed, uh, and I'll catch you then. Have a great one. I get the feeling, obviously, that kid Passe. is uh, only. What? It, We're leaving. Is only. Be right there. Is only with them. See ya. Fuck you. Is only with them because he's family. And